and I'm going to be teaching you macrame. This series is going to be a baby macrame toy. This is after a design I have called Nibble Knots because they're great for teething babies. If you don't have a friend or a cousin or someone that you want to give a baby gift to, then you can use this as a mask holder. You can tie your masks to the end of it and let them dry in the laundry room. You could use this as a key ring holder. This has a lot of different uses. If it's going to be for babies, you need to use beech wood um, or some other wood that is for teething. Um, if it's not gonna be a baby toy, then you could use like a metal ring that you can buy at any craft store or some sort of, you, it doesn't even need to be a circle. It could be some sort of shape with a hole in it that you just really like if you're gonna use it for anything else besides a baby toy. Or you can get a ring, like a baby toy ring or a teething ring at a store that's made for teething and then do the same thing to it. Uh, I'm going to put links to the specific macrame cord that I like and the wood that I like. And I'm also gonna put some other links uh, if you want to order things in advance for some other things I'm going to be teaching. Another safety thing if this is going to be for babies is you want this to not be so long that it's gonna wrap around a baby's neck. So if you wrap this, you'll see that that's not long enough to wrap around a baby's neck. You can make these shorter, but I would not go longer if you're gonna make this for a baby toy. You can make this as long as you want if you're gonna use it for a leash or some sort of um, lanyard or anything else that you want. If you want it to be hanging from the cabinets in your home, whatever you, else you're gonna use it for, it can be any other length. For a baby, it cannot wrap around a baby's neck. We're gonna start off this week with this one. This is going to be the simplest. And then we're gonna build off and do this week two, and then this week three, week four, and then week five will be the tassel ends. So let's get started. For this activity, you're gonna need something to attach your ropes to. I like to call them your rope tentacles. Um, your cord, I like three millimeter at the smallest. This is a really good size to work with. Sometimes there's four millimeter that I like to use for bigger pieces, like plant hangers, but this is a good size for this activity. And scissors, and then something to hang your macrame on. I like to hang. You can do it with it lying on a table. It's just a little bit harder. It's nice when you have gravity to pull with um, vertically. So you can either use something like this and hold it with a clip, or you can use another piece of rope to tie it to, or you can also use a shower ring that comes unclipped or hooks to hold this in place. I usually use shower rings, but I forgot to bring them. Say this is for a baby. You're gonna take the end of your macrame cord. So you're going to make a circle. That's as long as you're gonna want it to be. So then we're gonna double it. So once it's doubled, this is how long of a piece we're gonna work with because you can cut off the ends if they're too long. But you don't wanna have not enough cord. But if it is too short, it's okay to make a shorter toy ring or key ring or anything. You just don't want it to go longer. So we're gonna bend it and make a piece the same length. And then we're gonna do that one more time so we're gonna have a third. And this is how long our cord is gonna be. So we're gonna cut it right there. And then when you cut it, you'll release and have your shorter piece in the middle and then your longer piece on the outside. So this is gonna be one third on the inside and two thirds on the outside. So here I am doing that for you one more time. I am measuring how big I want my piece to be. This is gonna be my guide. So I double it and then I triple it and then I'm gonna cut it at the end of that third piece. Snip. And then I'm gonna take that guide and I'm going to measure it two more times so that I'm gonna have three 
cut pieces that are that long. And a third time. So then I'm going to set one piece aside. That's again going to be my guide. And then I'm going to take the other two pieces and I'm going to put it into thirds again so that I'm going to have one piece is going to be double the side of another piece. So you have one third on one side and two thirds on the other side. So I dropped one side. So there's that shorter piece hanging. And then I'm going to make a little loop at the top where I've uh, bent them and I'm going to save those, put those to the side. I'm going to clip them or whatever you want to do. I just forgot to put up my ring first, so I have to clip those and put those to the side. Again, you can use anything to attach this. I mean, sometimes I even use a hanger on a chair or whatever your mom will let you do. You don't want to scuff up anything. So take one piece off. Now for this first piece, it doesn't totally matter because you have nothing else on the ring, so it doesn't matter what piece is inside or outside. So you're going to take your loop, put it through the hole so it's over, and then tuck your rope inside of the loop and then pull up. So that's how you make it look like it's got that base at the bottom of the loop. And then you're going to take your shorter piece and make sure that your two short pieces are going to be touching and your long pieces on the outside. Just do that again. And then you're going to just tighten them up, scoot them together, make sure your ends are the same long in the in same length on the inside and then you can even them out if they're a little bit uneven so there we go for that piece all right let's get started with the dna knot you're going to take the piece that's in your left hand cross it over like a four and then you're going to take the piece that's in your right hand and loop it under and cross it in the back through the hole that you've made on the left side and then pull it up and you do the same thing over and over again so again you're going to take the left piece cross it underneath the right piece and then the, uh, the right piece will hook it and go through the hole in the left side. You do that over and over again, just the same side, making the same four over and over again. And that's why it's going to curve because you're going, you're doing the knot in the same direction over and over and over again. So now we've come to a point where it's starting to really curve. So you're just gonna switch your hands. That's all you're doing. So my hands were over here and now I'm gonna just move them back over and do the same four over and over again. And with these knots, you don't want to go too tight where your hands are gonna start hurting or your like knuckles are gonna start hurting over time. You just wanna gently pull it so that it's tight, but not, again, too tight. And you're gonna do it again and again. It's gonna get really long. And then you can twist it to make them even tighter if you want it to look that small, like the twists to go around quicker. You can keep them more long if you want to also. And then you check the length to make sure that's not gonna wrap around the baby's neck again. And then again, depending on what the purpose is of this toy or just a lanyard, whatever you're gonna make it for, check the length. And then you also wanna make sure that your ends are still pretty long because you wanna have ends to work with. So here, I'm gonna take the last, this, is, this was my last knot, so I'm gonna tighten that really tight so that it doesn't come unraveled so that I still have ends left when I come back to do the tassels on week five. And that is the DNA knot. This can be used in lots of other macrame projects.